Where is the final approach fix on the ILS? Coming up next in this video. Again, welcome to the pilot interview course, episode seven. Where is the final approach fix on the ILS? We're going to use a few examples, and here's one. The ILS localizer runway 19 left. Where is the final approach fix on the ILS? You guessed it right, 2,000 feet at glide slope intercept, and it's depicted by the lightning bolt, or officially the zigzag line. If you're looking at a Jeppesen chart, the way they depict the glide slope intercept is right here. The minimum altitude intercepts the glide slope. You can see right there, it's a little bit simpler, no zigzag line, but it is assumed right there that that's the glide slope intercept. It doesn't actually pull it out and use a zigzag line that it does on the FAA charts. So right there, final approach fix, it's at 2,000 feet and glide slope intercept. If you're wondering what that glide slope, or GS 1,984 is, that's the altitude that you should depict on your altimeter when you are on the glide slope at the outer marker. So again, that's the outer marker altitude on the glide slope. So let's look at some of the definitions, and this will help us when we look at some of the other examples in this pilot interview course section. So the final approach fix is the fix from which the final approach to an airport is executed and which identifies the beginning of the final approach segment. It's designated on the government charts by this Maltese cross for non-precision approaches. And the zigzag symbol, sometimes we call it the lightning bolt, designating the glide slope intercept altitude is normally the precision final approach fix altitude. Now another important point, when ATC directs you to a lower than published glide slope slash path or vertical path intercept altitude, it's the actual point at the glide slope or path or vertical path intercept is where the final approach fix is. And we're going to look at an example of that a little bit later. Another important discussion here in a actual term is the final approach segment for an approach with vertical guidance or a precision approach begins with a glide slope slash glide path intercepts the minimum glide slope glide path intercept altitude shown on the approach chart. So remember that because that's going to be an answer to one of the questions coming up. So where's the final approach fix for this one? It's uh, Lebanon, New Hampshire, the ILS to 18 KLEB. Uh, I have links below in the show notes. You can pull that up, that chart up there. So let's take a look at that. What I'm going to do is zoom in to the profile view. So take a look at it and answer this. Where is the final approach fix for the ILS? And yep, you guessed it right. Final approach fix is 3,500 feet. Right there, glide slope intercept. If you look at Hank, Hank, you should be at 3,500 feet when you're on the ILS. And that's where you should actually have an indication on your altimeter of 3,500 feet on the ILS. It's good cross-checking when you're doing your approach. If you're looking at a Jeppesen chart, of course, 3,500 is the minimum altitude, and it shows you by that solid line, so, uh, solid line that that's the intercept for the glide slope. That's your final approach fix right there. A little bit simpler depiction, I think, uh, but it's 3,500 feet is your final approach fix on this ILS. And this is how it's depicted on the Jefferson chart. So let's look over some things as far as the, the FAA charts and different terms here. The final approach fix for a precision approach is, is depicted by the glide slope intercept in the minimum altitude. It's shown right here as a, the bend right there in the solid line. Here in this example, the glide slope intercept altitude is 2,400 feet. That's your minimum altitude, which intercepts the glide slope. Another depiction on the FAA charts is the glide slope altitude at the outer marker, the final approach fix. As you can see here, it's depicted in a little bit lighter numbers and a little bit smaller lettering there. So that's the glide slope altitude when you're at the outer marker or the final approach fix. The next indication on here I want to point out is the ILS glide slope. 
It's right there, looks like an arrow, and that is the ILS glide slope. So that's the other depiction on the FAA charts. There's a lot of other depictions out here I'm not gonna go over right now, but it's in the chart user's guide. So I really highly recommend you get that, be in the show notes, the, the actual uh, links to that. All right, here's another example. And this is a good example because it gets a lot of people into trouble because there's something that's very uh, specific about this. Uh, this one in Chicago, Los Angeles, Atlanta, and there's another airport out there that I can think of off the top of my head, but this is a really good one. So where's the final approach fix on the ILS for 27 left at Chicago O'Hare? Blowing this up in the pro profile view, you guessed it, it is 2,200 feet. Good job. So it's 2,200 feet is the final approach fix for the ILS localizer runway 27 left at Chicago. So here's a caution. There's a couple cautions here. High temperature and high pressure may cause the step down altitudes to protrude into the glide slope. And this is actually some verbiage from the FAA they put out in a safety notice. So you must caution because not all, uh, if you look at most of these glide slopes, the actual intercepts will be along those points on the profile view and they'll intercept at the altitudes indicated on the profile. Not so in this case during some high temperature and high pressure, and that could be true at many different at other uh, ILSs along, around the system. So the most important thing here is this takeaway is, first of all, if you're given the ILS to 27 left is to comply with all altitude restrictions. For instance, all these step down altitudes prior to the final approach segment when cleared for an ILS approach. And we talked about that a final approach segment. Let's take another look at another example. Say you're on the ILS or localizer 19 left and you're at 1800 feet. They have you at 1,800 feet, and they've been vectoring you, air traffic control. Then you're cleared for the approach. Where is the final approach fix? Yep, you guessed it right. 1,800 feet and glide slope intercept. Remember again, at the bottom here of this, the final approach fix is when ATC directs a lower than published glide slope or path or vertical path intercept altitude, it's the resultant actual point of the glide slope slash path or vertical path intercept. So that is the actual glide slope intercept, which was 1,800 feet. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. There's a lot here, and uh, we'll go on to another video as far as some of the non-standard altitudes, non-standard temperatures, non-standard pressures, and uh, some of those things that, you, that are a caution, but that ILS to 27 left over at Chicago, I'd really like you to take a look at that. Here are some of the references, Instrument Flying Handbook, the FAA Chart User's Guide, the AIM, the Pilot Handbook and Aeronautical Knowledge, and the Instrument Procedures Handbook. I really highly recommend you check those out and you go over those. And I'll even include that safety notice uh, that was actually put out to carriers as far as you know, flying the ILS 27 left at Chicago and some other airports. Well, I hope you enjoyed that short video about where the uh, final approach fix is on the ILS. As you can tell, there's different portions along the ILS we have to be careful about. Also, if you're interested in more videos like this one from our pilot interview course, make sure you subscribe below and click on the bell so you're notified each time a new video comes out. This, is, of course, is part of our career coaching. And by the way, if you're looking into a career in aviation or you just want to get another rating, etc., there's one way that you can do that with no cost to yourself, and that's actually looking at our Aerospace Scholarships Guide. The Aerospace Scholarships Guide is an online directory, and for $10, we update that scholarships directory once a month. And we have over $120 million in scholarships now in that guide. Updated monthly. It's a, a great resource. Whether you're looking at a private pilot certificate, an instrument rating, maybe you're looking to get a type rating in a 737 or an Airbus A320, go check out the scholarships guide. Also, by the way, you can possibly get that for free through our Pay It Forward campaign. Go to aviationcareerspodcast.com slash pay it forward, and you can find out more about how you might be able to get a free scholarships guide for one year. We have, again, monthly updates to that. I hope you enjoy this video. Again, there's many more coming in the future. And uh, by the way, we can't wait till you we move into our new office here at the campus here at Lakeland Linder International Airport. We're moving to the south side. Most of our videos will be coming from that side of the airport when we move over there. 
So anyway, one of the things I want to stress, though, is I know you've looked at this video, but don't stop there. What I want you to do is take action. Do something today to move forward in your career. It might be something small. It might be actually looking up one of those references that we have in the show notes down here. Maybe it's looking into a scholarship. Maybe it's looking into another rating. Maybe it's just talking to friends and talking it over with your family. What's next in your career? But I want you to take action and do something today to move forward in your career and your flying life. We'll talk to you next episode. Safe flying out there.